So I think we will call the meeting to order at 7.04. All right, so the first agenda item is a review and approval of the meeting minutes from December. Let me find my... We're never gonna live up to Marie's standards on the note taking, just for the oh, record. I know, she did a really nice job. Okay. Um, I did review them. I have no further comment. I think she did a very nice job. So I don't know if someone wants to make a motion yep. to approve. So Brad, can you make a motion to approve the minutes as provided? Okay, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as provided. I apologize, I was on mute. You get to second it. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. Opposed? Nobody else to oppose it. Minutes accepted. Okay. Uh, next agenda item is citizens petitions and comments. We have any of those Todd or Eric or Mr. Casper. Mark. No. I don't. That's good. I do not. Okay. No thing here either. Okay. All right. Next agenda item new correspondence and communications. So I know we have something from Marie, and I believe Brad, you do as well. So maybe we'll start with Marie's, whatever I did with them. One second, I had them. All right, uh, Marie shared a report from the Shenacoset Women's Golf Association. Um, just to kind of summarize what she sent through. Um, it looks like there's an increased interest in the SWGA from women who've been playing at other local clubs in the area. Um, she has submitted to Todd the proposed 2022 calendar. So that should be helpful. She has proposed for 2022 a nine hole option for the SWGA on Tuesdays. Um, that'll basically have them finishing at the same time as the 18 holers so they can um, have lunch together. But um, starting at about 10 a.m., give them a chance to play the front nine, which I think will be um, very helpful to especially to some of our older um, members. Um, she has requested group clinics with a pro uh, to focus on skills such as chipping, sand, et cetera, and then afterwards meet for drinks at par four. Um, so hopefully that will come through. Um, they're working on, we're working on a handbook for 2022. Um, and so the goal there is that it also align with the, the course's rules and practices. Um, so I think that will be helpful. Um, we, the SWGA is going to request that on the Shenacoset homepage, so Shenigolf, 
that there be links to um, some of the information for the women, similar to what there is for the men. So to the, this handbook, to a calendar or to other information that's available about how to join the women's group. Um, and then the, the question of the century, um, update on any restroom renovation that might be happening inside or outside the building. Sure, so I can update uh, everybody on actually both. Uh, so there was a pre-bid meeting a couple of weeks ago for the bathroom inside the clubhouse. Um, bid opening is this Thursday. There was okay. a really strong turnout. Uh, I, I went up just to kind of observe and there was probably close to 30 people Whoa. that attended that. So yeah, so that was really encouraging. So hopefully that will make the bids very competitive. Mm -hmm. um, that we'll, we'll know more uh, come this Thursday uh, when the bids are actually uh, open. Uh, and work is projected to start sometime in March uh, once the uh, once the firm that's awarded the bid you know gets all their insurance and all their documentation in place uh, that usually takes about three weeks to a month so they're expecting uh, construction to begin in uh, sometime in March uh, but no date's been set yet. Um, the other uh, update on the uh, bathroom uh, down around the uh, eighth hole, um, actually got a report back from the architectural firm that's looking at both uh, addressing the issues in the maintenance building and also um, looking at building a bathroom. Uh, their recommendation right now is that the bathroom be a separate building uh, and they estimated they gave a number of different uh, options uh, but the estimated price is right around a hundred thousand dollars for the bathroom okay and i'm supposed to be meeting with the engineers uh, sometime this week to go over the plans in more detail um, <clears throat> So um, we, if, I'm not sure if everybody's aware, but uh, our local representatives presented, uh, proposed a couple of bond projects to the Connecticut Bond Association. Um, and we were actually awarded two bonds, uh, both as it turns out for bathrooms, one at Sutton Park and one at Park Four. So we now have uh, two pots of money for the same project. Um, and we are looking into whether we could use the money that was approved in the CIP towards the bathroom uh, project and also the renovations to the maintenance building. Uh, if, if that's the case, we will likely move forward, uh, approach the council uh, and the RTM with that proposal. So the proposal would be to use the bond money uh, for the interior bathroom and the money that was approved for the CIP for the interior bathroom, redirect that, uh, keep it on the golf course and redirect it towards the uh, bathroom by the eighth hole and also uh, potentially uh, maintenance um, of, of the uh, maintenance shed, the golf course maintenance shed. Uh, so we're, we're looking into that and, and I can update folks if, um, if, if we're able to do that. And if you're not? Well, then we would put that money into a CIP and okay. uh, you know, the CIPs for this year uh, have or for FYE 23 have already been submitted. So it would be, uh, the earliest we could do it would be FYE 24, which would be a year from this July. Okay, well, hopefully we can use, do that. Cause I know our representative is very interested in seeing 
bathroom facilities and upgrades to the uh, maintenance shed done at the golf course, both of them. Yeah, they identified a number of issues with the maintenance shed and I'm sure Eric is well aware this, he lives in it every day, but yeah. uh, you know, insulation is gone and there's holes in the roof and it, mm -hmm. it desperately needs work. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, thank you for that. Any questions? Margaret, this is Brad. Yep. Is is so those two grants? We we just uh, we're talking about the maintenance shed and an exterior structure to the maintenance shed for another restroom. Um, so that has nothing to do with the modifications that are going to be done at the par four restaurant restrooms. I'm gonna pass that to Mark. Okay, yes, that's correct. Uh, modifications to the bathroom within the clubhouse are a, a separate project from the exterior bathroom that's being proposed down by the eighth hole and the maintenance building. Uh, we're fortunate right now to have two pots of, of money uh, for one project and we're hoping to redirect one of those pots to potentially two other separate projects all within the golf course though okay right but and but I, I did receive communication from our representative that 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 the money for the maintenance shed and the outside uh, facility or inside facility whatever the bathroom facility down by the eighth hole you know that it doesn't get lost and the money doesn't move away from it right so i just want to make sure that we're all in agreement that i mean if it gets redirected off to other projects on the golf course uh, i mean we've the bathroom has been a topic of conversation now for five years um, i'd hate to see it go another two years without any kind of reaction especially since um, money has been made available in some way shape or form yeah, I, th I think our proposal to uh, the council and to the RTM would be for um, that money to um, to be directed towards those two projects. Okay. When I spoke with Chris Conley, she was very specific in saying that the monies, the $245,000 bonds were for the restrooms in the clubhouse and the restroom on number eight. And, and she told me that she made sure that it was very clear that the, the language was such that it could not be diverted from anything other than that. That's just what she told me. Yeah. I, I don't know anything more than what she said to me. That's essentially what she has said to me too. Okay, that's good. Yeah, we just need to confirm that language that they uh, submitted to Hartford and yep. was approved by the Bond Commission. Okay. Oh. Good evening, Marie. Hello, sorry, I'm a little late. That's okay. So we just read through your, your document and provided that update. Well yeah. done, by yeah. Yep. Marie, the other thing while you were away is we elected you chief communications officer. Yes. No, thank you. <laughs> Does that mean minutes? <laughs> no, thank you. Well, that's only part of the job, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll talk. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, you did an excellent job. Thank you. Yep, they were approved with no question. All right, Brad, do you have an update from the men's club? I do. Um, so just to remind everybody, I resigned as Shenacoset Men's Club president after, I don't know how many years, it had to be at least six or seven. And um, But I, I told the club that I would stay on board the GAB uh, 
and represent their interests. And we had our, when we had the election of officers on Saturday, uh, we had our most well attended meeting in many years. So that was good. And I'm happy to say that a lot of the, the, the younger guys are stepping up to these leadership positions. And there was a lot of uh, good talk back and forth. And they asked me to bring uh, four agenda items to you guys tonight. And uh, I, I, I know I talked to you, Margaret, about some of these. Mm -hmm. And I talked to, I already talked to uh, Todd about one of them, but the, the four items were um, one of them I, I don't think is that we need to spend a lot of time on. There was an ask for, uh, you know, could we better the Wi Fi in the pro shop? Um, because the, the computer that we're using for score entries is, is uh, off of the par four Wi Fi, which is quite weak. But at the same time, Jimmy, our handicap chairman, also informed me that uh, the CSGA is no longer going to support the computer hardware that we have in the shop. So, you know, it's, it's time for the few that aren't on board for them to get, in t get up with the times and, you know, get themselves email addresses and, and online access like everybody else. So I, 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 I don't think there's much need for us to go much further on the Wi-Fi. We're all going to have to go uh, to our smart devices eventually, and there's only a handful that haven't yet. Um, so that was one of the asks. Um, one of them was asking about whether or not it would be possible to have a link through the Shenacoset website for us to post things like um, men's and women's club tournament schedules, um, things like that. I, I, I'm not very computer savvy, um, uh, webs, I'm not a web developer. I don't know what that would entail. Um, and I know we probably don't have folks here in attendance tonight that could answer those kinds of technical questions, but that was something that the club asked me to bring to the board tonight. Uh, does anybody know if that's even a stretch possibility? Well, we post the, um, the annual tournament schedule on there it's just i i provide i don't know eric do i provide you with that or do i provide um eric and it but but we post that uh somewhere on our website so i don't see how it would be any different to to post the men's club schedule and the women's club schedule i don't see how that would be any different okay yeah i i think brad i think we could do that um it would have to be somebody in town. Uh, the information would need to be provided to us, and then we could get it to whoever to, excuse me, make sure that it gets posted. So I, I think that's very doable. Okay, great. Uh, is there anybody in particular that I would need to speak with to facilitate that? If you if you provide me with a list, then I can forward it uh, on to uh, to Eric and IT or someone. Okay, great. Um, one of them was, uh, and I, and I really like this idea. It's the idea of well, first of all, just some little background. The the members of the men's and women's club really have uh, take a lot of pride in the course and maintenance and upkeep of it. We're the, you know, we fix more divots than we make. We repair more ball marks than we make. That's just the culture of the club. Um, and along those lines, we'd like to do more. And uh, we would, we were wondering if we could entertain the possibility of people that are walkers being able to carry some kind of uh, whether, whether the course provides it or we bring our own uh, bucket or bag that we could fill with sand that the course would provide so that we could actually, the walkers could repair um, 
divots on the course as they go along, because right now uh, the only option they have is, is if there's somebody with a, 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 a driving cart that has the sand buckets that are installed on the, the driving carts at all times. And so I guess that question would be more for Eric. I think this has come up before. I got to look and see what they have, what our golf course supply companies make now. I think they make a small bucket that you can hang off your pull cart. Okay. And then, you know, if you happen to empty it as you come by maintenance, you can just scoop some more up from our pile there. But I'm going to have to do a little digging to see what is out there. Yeah. Yeah, because we were wondering if, if, if what was proposed is like, could there be some sort of like sand receptacle? It wouldn't have to be huge, but right near the shop and not even implying that the pro shop would have to provide, I mean, the, the course would have to provide the receptacles, but even if we could bring our own and we could just take a couple scoops out of something that's right there at the first tee so that we'd have an opportunity to get started right away on the first hole. And then, yeah, to your point, uh, refill by the maintenance uh, building if, if needed. Yeah, I can look in a couple of catalogs and see what they have. Okay, so I it's mean, a ability. Even if we, even if they don't or it's too expensive, you know, we did something. We just put a big divot box filled with sand on the first tee. And then if you guys can come up with your own containers and do it that way, you know. Yep. Okay. I'm sure the guys would be happy to provide their own stuff. That would be a great start. Okay. Thanks. Um, and the last one was uh, Todd and I were talking about it before, and that was the guys were wondering if there was any way that we could get like the same kind of benefit that we have with the, the call in for tea times. If we could have that on the, on the online booking, if members could have like a one hour advantage for booking online, but I guess there's some challenges involved with that. Um, and those were the only four things that I had from our club. So on that one, is is there any way, if, if it's not possible today, is there any way for us to maybe sit down with the, um, the vendor at some point and talk about features that would be nice to have if they're doing any kind of future releases or work like that? Because there may be some things that, that would be make for nice enhancements that would help because I think more and more people are going to start reserving online. They're not, you know, not a lot of people are going to sit on a phone for 20 minutes on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon. And Margaret, when you say vendor, are you referring to whomever does the computer, the IT yeah. stuff? I think it's Vermont Systems, right? No, it's Chelsea. Chelsea, that them. So the problem with uh, with Chelsea, and I asked that specifically. Uh, when we were going through the setup was that Chelsea um, looks on a quote unquote member number, whether it be a phone number, which would mean that it actually is not a member and a member member number, which is a member number. Um, the system re does not differentiate between the two. And so uh, because I asked that specifically and so there is no way um, when we when we went to uh, the workaround, which was having members call in an hour earlier, that was the workaround because the system does not differentiate between a member and a member number and a non-member number. To Chelsea Systems, um, any numbered person is a quote-unquote member, and so that's the problem. So, okay, but what would keep us from maybe sitting down with them and saying, hey, wouldn't it be nice if your system could do this instead? I, I, well, I said that. I mean, I, I, I told them that and they, I mean, there are, there are hundreds of, of, uh, of, of um, host clubs uh, for the Chelsea system. And I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, for for fu future rewrites of of and updates of of the system, that would be really awesome. Um, I put a a call into to uh, Teresa, who is the head IT um, at Chelsea, and left a message with her, and I expect that I'll probably talk with her tomorrow, um, and uh, and I'll get an update on that and. And, and I'll ask her about, you know, are there going to be subsequent rewrites and, and what have you, because it certainly would be nice to, uh, to you know, to, to have the, the system differentiate between a member and a non-member. Now, there are some clubs that probably um, regard everyone, if they're a private club, regard everybody by phone number as a member. Um, it's it's unique for uh, Muni to have a membership and a non-membership. So there are many who who are private clubs that that there's no reason to have a uh, something that would distinguish one number from another, whether they identify as just a member number or have all their members by phone number. Everybody in their system is a member. That would be a that would be a private club, and that's like half of their clientele base, probably. That's interesting. So, like for example, if I were to go and, and make a reservation at Sterling Farms down in Stanford, which is Stanford's municipal, there's a separate entry point and separate set of rules for people who are residents of Stanford and have a. They do it differently, but basically are members of that course versus people who are not. So somehow their, their system, I'd have to go figure out what it is again, does have a way of distinguishing. And if I recall correctly, when we go to log in to Chelsea, we're asked to either indicate whether we're members or non-members. Sure. So there must be some data well, element or some element pool. in their database or in their data structure that allows them to distinguish members and non-members. Only in that you're entering a different portal. So why not have one portal open up an hour earlier? I was told that that's not possible. But I, I expect that I probably will talk to her tomorrow morning. But I was told specifically because that was a specific question that I asked uh, Chelsea before we uh, before we got loaded up okay well i mean there, things evolve so it's always good when you're dealing with vendors to keep on them and i mean these are requirements and needs and it would be helpful um to make sure if you know if they can't do it right now that they be at least logged it as a feature a future feature request Sure. Yeah, Margaret, that's pretty standard. We do the same thing with Vermont Systems, which is yeah. what we're currently using for our registration is, uh, you know, Jerry will get on the phone and, you know, submit a, a request for enhancements. Uh, you know, sometimes other departments have already made that request and it's on their to-do list and, and other times uh, it's, you know, could be unique just to our particular department. So it, you know, there's a time element to that that uh, it could take take a while until either they hit a certain number of requests or you know they finally get to it. And other times, we've uh, actually paid them to have a programmer do something specifically for us. So you know there are, I mean I can't speak for Chelsea, but I, I can tell you that uh, you know the software company that we're working with, you know, we have done that in the past, depending on, you know, what it was. Okay. So Margaret, I don't know if now is the appropriate time to ask, but there was one other thing that came up, but it was more a question, not in a in a, an agenda item and I, I don't I want to confirm that I answered the question appropriately they were asking about like the capital projects and I told them that the next one was the left of four 
Um, is that correct, Eric, Todd, Mark? Yeah, there, I don't know, Eric, you're gonna to have to chime in here. I don't remember exactly. I think there was a couple of holes and, um, I think we it's the bunkers. Yeah. I think it's the bunkers between three and four, yeah. uh, all around four, and the bunkers by six green. So oh. basically everything left of that old service road. Oh, wow. That's a lot for this I year. There's some T work involved too. So, does that include the area between? Um, the fourth green and the fifth tee? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. That's all I had. Let's go back to figure out where we are. Any other correspondence? Um, Marie? Nobody. Okay. Next agenda item is the golf course report. For January. If you look at, um, you know, we fell short of our uh, comparing with, with last year, same month. Um, but if you look at the weather events, you can see why that would be the case. And last year. Epic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was that was the entire story right there. So. So it was a matter of weather impact. We had uh, eleven course co closures as opposed to six last year, seven on the weekend, four last year. So yeah. Estimated lost revenue. 16k as opposed to last year 8k yeah so yeah but it's january <laughs> right as we would say in golf a lot of holes to play yeah right No, uh, not unexpected, obviously. So, I mean, total revenue fiscal year to date, we're we're still still killing it, and, and we're still right there with what we did last year. Exactly. Which was an all-time record year, by the way. Right. Exactly. Right. So a nice fall, dry out the course a little bit, and might be back in business. That's Eric's department. <laughs> Got to be a sloppy mess out there right now. If my yard is any prediction of it. Yes, it's pretty icy and wet out there right now. Yep. Okay. So I imagine it's going to be a while before you open back up. By a while, I mean at least a couple of days. We booked yes, time for sure. <laughs> You book two times for when? Tomorrow? Well, that's what Dwayne and Dwayne uh, said that he was going to try and book a tea time for this Saturday, just in case. I said, don't hold your breath. Yeah. Got a little more rain. Yeah. So, okay. But no, I, I think, like I said, not unexpected. So thank you very much for that. Marketing report. Mark. So I'm going to skip over the marketing report and talk a little bit about the proposed budget, because okay. I think that lends itself to uh, the next item, which is uh, course and membership fees uh, specifically. Uh, so late this afternoon, I got word from the finance department that all of our um, expenditures have finally been entered in. Uh, we had to submit our budget about three weeks ago 
and there was a, a number of holes that needed to be filled. Uh, the town didn't have that information, so we didn't have that information. So, you know, that's things like uh, insurance, retirement, other post-employee benefits. So, um, so I'm going to just kind of update everybody on what the uh, proposed budget looks like. Um, so the proposed budget for FYE 23 is $1,475,103, which is a 12% increase from FYE 22. Oh. Yeah. Um, personnel expenses increased $90,000 uh, or 10.3%. Uh, the increase is due to a, a number of different factors. We have proposed to, uh, right now there's a, a 0.5 FTE full-time employee, and we've proposed to bump that up to right. uh, a 1.0 full-time employee. So there's, there's that cost. Um, and then there's the social security costs associated with an additional uh, 1.0 full-time FTE uh, increase in seasonal salaries. So, so the Connecticut minimum wage keeps going up by a dollar every year. Um, so that, that impacts us. Um, retirement went up and health insurance. Health insurance alone went up $25,000. Health insurance now is $197,000. So it went from 172 to 197. Uh, operating expenses uh, increased by uh, 69,045 or 5.2% increase. Uh, that increase is due to the scheduled replacement of a TriFlex T mower, uh, rising fuel prices, uh, the rising cost of in general, just of materials and supplies, uh, the increased cost of a new golf cart lease, and vehicle maintenance costs associated with aging equipment. So that is, uh, that's our expenses. Um, our projected revenue was $1,491,494. You say so that you number one more time? Sure. Yep. Uh, 1,491,494. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that's our revenue. Okay. So the, you know, the margin between the two is not that great. Uh, 15, $16,000, which uh, as we see can easily, yeah. um, easily not materialize. Wow. Okay. But we, yeah. yeah, and then on top of that, we still have the um, fund balance, right? Not that we, we not just going to be touched. I just want to make sure the fund balance still exists. The fund balance still exists. Yes. Okay. All right. Remind me the fund balance. Oh, let's see. The fund balance. Let's see if I get this right. So total. Well, and this was as of 63021 uh, was $544,944. Now, that sounds like a lot, but 219000 of that gets set aside as a 60-day reserve. So you got to take the 219 away from the 544. And then there's also $64,000 that's committed to vehicles. So the, you know, what sounds like a whole lot of money is, mm -hmm. is actually a whole lot less. Right. Mm -hmm. And potentially we could be using some of that fund balance to pay for projects proposed uh, for this coming fiscal year. Thank you. So that's, uh, 
So I, I have to admit, I have to admit, I was kind of shocked that uh, the personnel expenses had gone up that much. That's crazy. Yeah. Not unexpected, but crazy. Yeah. And I assume that's town wide. Yeah, I'm imagining. Yes, everybody's on the same uh, high deductible health plan, which you know we were told four or five years ago was going to save us lots of money. Well, <laughs> I've yet to see it. Yeah. Maybe you are saving lots of money. Well, it, it could be. Yeah, it could be that the if we weren't using a high deductible that. Uh, you know, that number, that 197, maybe it would be 297 or more. Is the, is the town self-insured or no? Yeah, I don't think they're part of a, um, you know, a group. Yeah. Can I ask a question on the golf cart lease? Sure. Uh, you're going with gas carts or instead of electric? Yes. Yeah, we're replacing the carts that we've had now for five years, Todd, or four? It's a five-year lease. We, five we years. the last go around, we had a six-year lease, and it was too much. This is a five-year lease. It's going to be turning over earlier. So, but on the, I mean, the the issue with the the gas versus um, electric is you would have to have a a uh, a cart facility that could house every cart and hang a charger above every cart uh, and that's just, we don't have the room and we don't have the ability. Because every cart has to be charged at night. So you would have to have a facility, a pen, a structure that had room for 70 cars that would have, each would have its own charger an electric to that facility, that building, uh, in order to have a an electric fleet. So that's kind of the issue. But I mean, cost cost wise, one to the other with the expense of the chargers and the electric versus the gas, whatever, they're pennies apart. Usually, usually the decision between gas and electric is more a matter of if you have a very hilly golf course, you really can't consider an electric cart. Uh, our, we have a re relatively flat uh, uh, ground, um, but we just don't have the, the, the area to, to, to build that kind of structure in order to consider the changeover in cost. And being that there's no saving, uh, it's just, I mean, yeah, we're, we're gas. Okay. Um, I apologize, this is gonna come out of, out of order. I meant to ask this earlier. Um, when the town eliminates the mask uh, mandate, assuming they do that either at the end of this month or hopefully sometime in the next month or so, is the intention that the pro shop will be up and fully functioning? I can imagine that a lot of the women coming back from Florida or even the ones here will be ready to start purchasing using their pro shop credits um, items for this coming season. So just wanted to kind of check to see what, where we are with the mass mandate and, and then the reopening of the pro shop fully. Right, well, we've been, we've been allowing members to come in and shop and we've been allowing people to come into shop who ask. Um, but yeah, 
uh, right now it has to be masked up per the town manager, but right. But uh, um, but we we've had you know we've we've had the shop open for people who want to come in. We've always allowed them to come in. But yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, that's what I'm that's what I'm looking forward to for sure. So you're getting it restocked and being able to start purchasing. Yeah, I've got some stock, but I'm going to get some more lady shirts in. Yes, and I've got some lady headwear in, and I've got balls, and I've got gloves, and so forth. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So, Margaret, I got an email from the town manager earlier or this evening, uh, and I just read it now. It says I'm removing the mask mandate this Thursday, February 10th, but that seems to apply only to businesses in Groton. Yes. The final line says the mask mandate in town facilities remains intact at this point. Right. Because at the town council meeting last week, somebody said the earliest that they could remove it at the town level would be the end of the month. Yeah. So it's going to be actually this Thursday, they're lifting the mask mandate for businesses. Okay. That's good. Good for businesses. Yes. Still wear mine, but you know, a lot of people will be happy. All right. Sorry, feline member of the family. Um, Next agenda item is the uh, 2022 course and membership fees and then the policy and procedures review. Do we want to do one before the other? Or... I assume separate them. Um, want to go over the fees first? Yes. That seems simpler. I saw a 3% per proposed increase. Is that correct for yep of course i'm biased and, and more concerned with uh season pass holders than i am greens fees but so last year we did the three percent increase on the the season passes right a uh, limited number it was not um, all yeah yeah right. it was Three category right it Adult, the, the, associate, and associate plus. Plus, those are the only three categories. Did they all go up equally? Well, they went up by 3%, I think. Three and yeah. then some rounding. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. All right. So that means that, all right, so it's been 2020 is we put the um, card or the uh, course fees up. Um, the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the daily fees up. So perhaps this year, because we haven't raised them in a while, and I know the uh, adult economy, senior and family, they haven't been raised in five years. I'm reading this right? I don't have the five-year history in front of me, Margaret. Uh but I know we made some exceptions in, in the past. Yeah, I will share my screen. Nice. Yeah, Margaret, you're, it looks like the last time that fee was raised was 2017. I don't know if, can you see them? Yeah, I'm sharing the screen. It's... 
Yeah, I'm going to try and go a bit bigger. I know we had uh, legitimate reasons for why we didn't raise certain categories, but yeah, maybe we should revisit this. So essentially, since sorry, I did have to I see, you really see pull it. up my phone screen. To see this? Uh, <laughs> am I looking at here? Yeah, in two thousand. I was slow. So you're right, 2015. So it's been seven years since the adult economy has gone up or the senior has gone up or the family. I think we have to double check that because um, it's been our policy, unless we see that there's there's one category that is uh, widely uh, out of step with our competition, we have always done across the board. So I don't know if we're not picking up something, Mark. Uh, the, the, um, I remember these. Because, I mean, when, when I mean, uh, when when I've when I've created a proposal for an increase, it's been across the board. I think I, I can't remember the last time that we just um, picked as uh, beyond last year um, just certain categories that we deemed that was appropriate to go ahead and and raise without raising other categories. Otherwise, it's always been across the board. Eric, is that your memory? Yes, it is. Except for the one year we lowered something. Yeah, we lowered right. these guys this we, year. We lowered the adult uh, rate uh, because it was getting um, we 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 deemed that it was getting um, uh, unusually high. Right. I do remember that. There have been an exception or two, but that's, yeah, I, I think the general rule was we raised it across the board, Todd, with yeah. just a couple of exceptions over the years. Right, right. Yeah, but we did, but like, lot. so last year we raised these three. We did, I remember we didn't do these, but the year before we, we didn't increase anybody's rate. For sure. So this year was zeros across the board. So the question right. is, and then the year that we we lowered the adult, we didn't raise anybody's, right? Right. So then the question is, what happened in this year, which was 2018? Well, actually, I do know because we raised these in 2018, which meant that we didn't raise these. Because I think we were raising one or the other. Yeah, we I'm, looking kind of... at the, I'm looking at the rate sheet from 2018. Yeah. And the adult economy, the senior, the family. Uh, well, we had a family two person, but the adult economy and the senior did not change from 18 to 19. Right. It was the same. So I think and this was, is right. And it was the same for 20, 2020 also. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Yes. Okay. Um, and this is to Mark. Is your projected uh, budget including this 3% increase or is it uh, not? And also, the second question is, what would be the revenue gained if we went with the proposal here for a 3% increase? So to answer your first question, yes, the uh, proposed revenue does include the 3% raise to th the categories that are identified in this spreadsheet. I would have to look at the total number of adult economy and senior citizen 
members and figure that out. And I don't have all that information in front of me. Okay, well, I just step it. So if we did not approve this three percent increase, we're going to be more. You said the differential is only about fifteen thousand dollars between. That's correct. Right. So without yep. this increase, we're in trouble. I'm it's a pretty tight margin, right? Pretty, okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's um, the difference between. 1,475 and 1,491. So that's $16,000. Uh, I'd, I'd like to comment on um, the weekly fee or the fees, well, especially the weekly during the week. Some of the course, you know, I looked at what you, some of the other data where you compare it to other courses in the area. <clears throat> and what seems to be missing is that some of the courses like Norwich, when you play, you get a five dollar um, <clears throat> chit for their for the restaurant. And uh, Pequot pre COVID, we, like we always play there on Thursdays, and they always had the same thing: a five dollar off on lunch at their uh, little little lunch center there. And uh, that seems to be an attraction, you know. It's an attraction for sure, and you guys don't have that at all. Right, we don't own the food and bread beverage at our course. I I think that's the same in Norwich. When we approached uh, the par four uh, about doing something like that, um, it became obvious that there was going to be problems in transfer of monies from our accounts to their account. Um, and it, it was apparent to me that, that um, say on a $5 voucher, they were looking to get $5 and we were discounting $10. Um, so it was a kind of a one-way proposition at the time that I was talking with, with um, the owners over there. And, um, and so, it uh, it became a non-starter. And so we decided at that point that we were going to incentivize our play and and our um, our revenue generation by discounting our fees uh, in a way that we thought was best for us um, and not relying on an F and B to go ahead and, you know, we're tossing them, uh, revenue, uh, and we're, we were getting very little uh, in return. Yeah, it would seem to be advantageous to them because they would probably end up increasing their overall revenues. Uh, right now, Right now, uh, when my group, which is, I guess, the GLP group, when we play at Shenny, uh, we, we don't get a big turnout at the restaurant like we do at, say, Norwich. I mean, we're talking, assuming COVID is over. Right, well, you would think so. I, I, I have even... Um approach them saying, you know, why don't they offer um, their second beer, domestic beer free with um, the presentation of a scorecard to get traffic increase over there? No, no, they can't give away a beer. Well, the beer is 60 cents. And they already bought a beer for 375, the first one. So, I mean, well, n not that we haven't tried. Yep. Would it maybe be worth just one more time? Since you brought it up. Or do we just leave it for now? I mean, considering the, the
the rent deal they got, you would think. They would play. Well, I don't know. They, they have their restaurant listed um, for sale, so I don't know about that. Okay. I don't know if you saw that, but it's I did not for like six hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. Interesting. Which was a surprise to me because well, whatever. We're going. I don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but right. They they haven't been um, they haven't been very um um uh, amenable to to discussions about about combining golf fees and 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 food vouchers. So. But I mean, I can always ask them again. Yeah, to Todd's yeah. point, that, that, you know, with the, the, the two entities being separate, it's an individual negotiation. And in this case, I, I mean, any given restaurant may be more difficult than another to be willing to cooperate. That's okay. a tough. I agree. Okay. So back to this. So in fact, I think this this ends up looking about right in terms of what we've done over the last five years or so. Okay. And Margaret, if you look historically, um, over the years, you know, going back 11 years or so, mm -hmm. um, you know, the adult economy, senior and family, those have all gone up about 18%, which is uh, comparable to, well, it's actually quite a bit more than uh, adult and, yeah. So 1027 to 1180? Um, 10, 20, so which, yeah, I'm yeah. not sure which membership you're looking at. So that's the adult economy. Oh, 1027 to 1180. Yeah. Yeah. If I did that's the formula about, correct. About 10, 15%, close to 15%. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the adult was on its way to a big number like that until we did this, right? We reduced it by 10%. Right, yeah, back in, was that And so, yeah, I mean, if you look at hard absolute numbers, an adult residence paying $300 more than an adult economy now, and they were paying about that much more, 350 more 10 years ago, or whatever yeah. that early number is. Right. Where it got a little off kilter was right here, where it bounced all the way up to 420. 420. So here we, we got up to about a $400 difference. So uh, back to Maria's, uh, Maria, Marie's question um, in terms of being able to support the expenditures versus revenues. I'm assuming that there is a need for rates to increase. Yeah, I don't see how we could not increase rates and okay. Uh, expect to meet our expenses. Yep. I agree, especially given inflation. Yep. So I, I expected to be us to be doing at least a 3% increase this year. Mm -hmm. um, I got a question on the season passes. How, how, 
how well are the plays tracked on those and are there averages? Yeah, I don't have that sheet with me tonight, but um, I have looked at that over the last 11 years. And I, I can certainly share that with the golf advisory board group at their, not this meeting Thursday night, but the next time we have a regular meeting, um, I, I can share that. Yeah, me as an example, um, I've got the senior pass, but I hardly ever play Shenny in the summer. <laughs> I, 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 if, if, if our GLP group has a, um, a tournament there, uh, you know, I would certainly play. But other than that, I, I don't. And instead, I play all winter and spring and fall. <laughs> So do you, do you have an idea about how many rounds you're getting in? 25, 30? I, I don't know. Uh, the winter rounds are <clears throat> so weather dependent. Uh, yeah. we, we were, I was playing at least twice or three times a week, thanks to Marie and her scheduling. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, you know, that, doesn't last the uh, you know last year i played a lot in january but february was pretty much snowed out and this year uh, january was nowhere as near as much as last january but uh, i don't think i honestly don't get my full benefit out of it but it's kind of nice to have yeah it helps i'm in the same boat um i have a question about the daily fees yep like the um the three percent is all on the members whether it be resident or non-resident are, are the daily fees not um is it have they been recently raised or increased the weekend rates were raised in 2018 so and again in 2020 oh okay yeah, and, and part of that is it's a function of, you know, looking at what the other courses in the area that we consider our competitors are charging. I mean, we have to be mindful of, of the fact that, you know, um, there needs to, we kind of need to stay in equilibrium to some degree with what the other facilities are charging. Yeah, I was going to ask the same question, and, and I understand your point, Mark. Um, did, was there, did we apply any increase at all to Greens Fee players? Uh, we did in 2020. Um, it looks like it was closer to a 5% increase across the board okay. for uh, Greens Fees. And the table that I'm looking at, it looks like uh, our greens fees, at, at least for what's proposed, is commensurate with our competition, right? Yeah, in, in some instances, we're above. In some instances, we're below. All right. Are there any candidate fees here for some where we might be like not significantly below, but below enough that we could tolerate a dollar or so increase. I think the other part of this is hard is because the, we, as we know, the, um, the fees on any given day are at the discretion of Todd and the professional. So in running specials and doing things like that. So we can set a fee. It doesn't necessarily mean that's what's being charged at various times of the year. I'm sorry. What was that, Margaret? There's Todd has discretion to. Yep. No, oh, the golf committee, which is Mark Barry, Eric Morrison, and myself, we meet weekly and we decide what is appropriate 
given the time of year, right? Exactly. Given our competition, uh, what kind of specials we need to run in order to fill areas of the day that is not being mm-hmm. utilized. So no, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So the golf committee, but it's at the discretion of you guys. Yeah, and 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 generally, well, over the last couple of years and, and that's been kind of an anomaly but you know once we set the rates we go to the summer rates it's pretty much that rate all across uh until sometime in august uh, or later um you know in fact this year i i don't even recall when we when we changed the rates but it, you know golfing has uh enjoyed a, a covid surge over the last couple of years but you know outside of the summer rates, yes, at times, and just a few years ago, we were adjusting rates in, in the afternoon to try to fill that slot, uh, play slot from one to three uh, prior to the um, different leagues coming in. But we haven't had to do that in the last couple of years, and uh, I'm hoping that we don't have to do that again. I, I think if, if memory serves, we kept our summer rates all the way until verification, which is the third week of September. Okay. Okay. My last question, uh, are we increasing the youth rate as well, the same amount? Because I, th- I think we gave the youths uh, a, a break last year and we're below our competition on youth rates. Yeah. way below our competition on it youth might be rate. time to move them yeah we, we, we're proposing that we increase those rates yeah 315 a thousand four hundred seven fifty and we're yeah. proposing 325 uh, okay oops. which is not a bad which is not a bad thing because you know this is my personal opinion uh, I regard our our youth, um our our youth population as our future potential and and also i i feel strongly uh as a golf professional to encourage our youth to get involved in the sport and so i'm inclined to be um more suppressing of the of the youth rate um I think three years ago we had like maybe 10 youth members. Now we have like 50. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I think that's a good thing. I agree a hundred percent, Todd, let's keep ours lower than our competition. Um, this isn't going to make a dent in our budget. So I, 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 I'd like to keep ours lower than the competition. I agree. Yeah. So then the question is, all right, I mean, is it 3% across the board or is it a little bit more in one area or another? The proposed is season pass. Um, season passes are 3% increase. Um, on the non well yes 3% across the board and the way that i do that is i increase the non resident rate by 3% and the resident is a discount of 10% off the non resident rate rounded up or down i concur okay yep. uh the only rate that uh, was not increased was the ranger rate because we're we need rangers. Okay. And Okay. Margaret, we haven't talked about it, but I just want to make sure that everybody's aware that we are proposing to increase the cart fees. Oh, that was the next question I had. I assume with the, if the rental 
has gone up, then that has to go up as well. Yeah, and going back to 2011, we haven't yeah. increased the rate since then. So the proposal was to increase the 18 rounds from 18 to $20, uh, nine hole from 13 to 15, and senior from 13 to 15. Okay. Well, we kept the uh, the nine hole uh, rate at 13 uh, because the the senior rate is an 18 hole rate. So we're giving a $5 discount on an 18 hole rate from the, the rack 18 hole rate. But the, the nine hole rate, um, if we went up to 15, then that, you know, the people that would do the math would say, well, wait a minute, what, what are you charging $30 for an 18 hole round? So I did not, I did not on that sheet, I did not propose an increase on the nine hole, on the nine hole rate. Right. So um, Elmridge so, okay. twelve dollars on nine holes. Norwich is thirteen dollars on nine holes. Great Neck is twelve dollars on nine holes. Okay. So it's so going to be I, I twenty. So it's going to be twenty for eighteen. And the 13. senior eighteen holes. 15 bucks. Okay. And Mark, do you need us to approve these proposed rates today as a council? Yes. Or as, a, as a board? Okay. Yes. Okay. And then Thursday night, the Golf Advisory Board has a joint meeting with the Parks and Rec Commission. Yep. That's the next step. And then from there, the commission will uh, make a recommendation to the council and we're scheduled to go to the council on February 22nd. Okay. Just need to stop sharing so I can take some notes here. All right. And I know we've discussed this before, but the likelihood of them proposing something in excess of what we're proposing is unlikely. Um, actually, this would be the second year that we had a joint meeting. I think it's the second year. Yeah. Uh, prior to that, we ran into two or three years where the Golf Advisory Board made one recommendation there was no joint meeting and the Parks and Rec Commission made uh, an alternative recommendation. So I would prefer that the, everybody get together in the same Zoom meeting and uh, try to, you know, it's an opportunity for the commission to ask some questions of the Golf Advisory Board to help them understand how we came to these numbers. And I think it worked out well last year uh, and hopefully we'll get the same result this year. Great. Yeah, thanks for reminding me about that joint meeting. When is that joint meeting again, Mark? Uh, it's this Thursday night at 7 o'clock, and it will be a Zoom meeting, and, and you'll be getting a, a Zoom in, invitation from Lisa uh, Hilton probably on Thursday. Great. Thank you. And, and we'll try to move the this discussion to the head of the, uh, the commission meeting so that you don't have to, we don't keep you waiting. Great, thank you. Okay. All right, so here comes the fun part. Any additional questions, Marie? All right. So I'll make the motion just because so if we can get it down and um, we can go from there. So I think, actually, no. We have a motion to increase the season pass rate for all categories except Ranger and youth by 3%. Just because I haven't done the math yet on the youth. No, the youth has been increased by 3%. Okay, so that's what it is. All right, so we have a motion to increase all season pass rates except for the Ranger by 3% for 2022. 
for next year. I second. Okay. Hang tight. All right, so we'll just go one of these at a time. That, that makes a summary. All right, that works. So any further discussion? The only All other change. In favor? Oh, sorry, Margaret. I was going to say, the, I don't know if you want to include it, but the only other change is the golf cart rates. I was going to do that as a separate motion. Oh, sorry. Okay. That's no, okay. Just because Brad jumped in and approved this or seconded this yeah, one. Yeah. So we'll just do them as two separate ones. It's okay. It works. Um, any other discussion? We'll take a vote. All those in favor of the motion as read? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No one. Motion carries. So 3% except for the Ranger. Second motion. I make a motion to increase the cart rates for the 2022 season. 18 hole to $20. Second. Hang on. <laughs> let, me, let me read all three um to make sure i get this right um and the senior 18 hole to 15 dollars now you can second second excellent <laughs> okay any further discussion or questions on that all right all those in favor aye aye okay Motion carries. Okay. Do we need a motion to leave the other ones the same? I don't think so. No. Okay. We got two motions there. All right. So that that's done. All right, next on the agenda, policy and procedures. So there was only a couple of small uh, proposed changes. One of them I think we had discussed uh, at a previous meeting and that was um, under section eight, the refund policy. Um, we kind of just combined what used to be two and three and, and took the information from three and just added it to two, which essentially said the golfing season runs from April 1st to October 31st. Okay. And put that in the same sentence when we were talking about credit. Uh, the other proposed change that the golf committee noted was um, we hadn't made the change uh, in the language of the senior citizen um, as we changed it to so that um, if they're 62 years or older as of the day they register for a season pass, um, that's what determines them as a senior. Previously, it had been January 1st, but we yeah. made that small housekeeping change just to reflect the fact that we now have a, a, a rolling membership um, date. Um, just a minor typo in yep. section 3A, third line. I think we're missing the two zeros for 4 p.m. Oh, yeah. Yep. So I don't know if the golf committee had anything else that thought that should be discussed. Brad has no further business. <laughs> I don't either. Do we need to make a motion on that to approve as amended? Uh, yeah, why not? Okay, hang on a second. All right, this is fun. We actually are doing stuff tonight. 
right, sorry. All right, so I'd like to make a motion to accept the 2022 Shinnecasset, see this document, golf course regulations as amended. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. And then, so our next meeting is Thursday at seven. It's a special meeting with Parks and Recreation Commission. I think it's been a long time since I've had three meetings on one night. This will be fun. Um, <laughs> I do. Uh, let's see. And then the next meeting of the Golf Advisory Board is I think in April. April, right. Yeah. I First Monday of yeah. April. Yeah, whatever that is. Yep. Okay. Are we ready for any other business? Hmm? Like April 4th is the first Monday of April. Yeah. Any other business? If not, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I'm gonna second it, Maria. You want me to? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. So thank you guys very much. Good meeting. I think. Try and get some notes out. Mr. Casper, thank you and welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. I couldn't think of anywhere else I'd rather be. <laughs> playing golf with me, Clarence. Don't get it. No, <laughs> we know, we know. <laughs> oh, Margaret, lastly, do I, Margaret, uh, before we leave, do I need to have uh, a Shenacoset men's club officer on the board now that I'm no longer an officer? No, it just needs to be a representative of the men's club. Okay, I'm happy. Remember, we'll do. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Mark, right. thank you. Eric, yes, thank, thank you. you. Okay, good we'll night, see everyone. You all Thursday night. Yep. Good night. Take care. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.